I'm Nicolas Zaimis. I am uh, heading the trade and investment and business section of the European Union delegation to Cairo. And I've started my job here since in September 2022. Uh, trade, uh, as you may know, it's uh, an exclusive competence of the European Union, which means that the European Union negotiates trade agreements with third countries at the terms the conditions for import of export of goods which means that the member states no longer can do that. Therefore, it's the European Union that negotiated with Egypt, for example, in 2004, the association agreement, of which a big part is the trade part. Therefore, our role here is to be uh, in contact with the government and with business to make sure that the agreement smoothly implemented. My role here is on the one hand, to try to resolve problems for businesses, for example, European businesses in Egypt, but also to try to explain, to clarify how the EU system works and help Egyptian businesses uh, find access to the European Union market. So in a way, you can say it's a dual role. It's a role like a, a link, a bridge between the two partners, helping with the ultimate scope and objective of helping the relationship strengthened, you know, to have more trade and more investment. Europe and Egypt had relations that go back millennia. So you mentioned Alexander the Great, but even goes further back. And uh, I was very interested to learn that actually Egypt invented my job. The first trade missions were apparently done during the period of the pharaohs, visiting the king of Ethiopia, trying to increase trade. So I'm mean, the country that really defined, you know, trade uh, trade diplomacy as a means of uh, contacting partners, you know, and, and growing economically together. Now, Egypt, uh, simply because of its location, you know, if you simply look at the map, you will see the obvious importance geographically. I think the EU is important to everybody, to start from the very big picture. The reason the EU was created was because we had some uh, terrible events in Europe uh, several decades ago. So Europe is an experiment in peace. You know, it's, 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 it's a union of countries who decided to give part of their sovereignty together in order to create something bigger than the sum of its parts. So it, it, the identity of Europe is an identity of peace, you know, a peace and economic growth together as partners. Now, in the EU, we have the single market, which is the, the biggest market in the world, you know, almost 450 to 500 million uh, consumers. And of course, uh, the, the power, the, the purchasing power of, of the EU is very high. And, and this is why we are the first trade partners for many of our partners, including Egypt. Egypt is actually a neighbor. Uh, we have historical ties with Egypt, but also we are the number one trade partner of Egypt, 36%. Uh, of all export of Egypt, while we supply a lot of the needs of Egypt in several uh, goods. Uh, and the same is for services. We have a very good exchange in, in services, whether import or export. So uh, I think we can be for Egypt, let's say, uh, a very good uh, partner in terms of providing the opportunity to, your, to Egyptian business to grow through its engagement with, uh, with the EU. And this can happen either through exports, production exports, or through investment. There are many Europeans, European companies who have come to Egypt to invest in order to uh, exploit the resources, capital resources, natural resources, human resources of Egypt, and to be able then to export to Europe or to use Egypt as a hub. So there is a, um, um, a reason why the association agreement with Egypt, and that is something that many people do not know, is actually one of the very first agreements, trade agreements, that the EU entered into with any partner. It was done in 2004. To then, the EU had almost no trade bilateral agreements with, with, with anybody in the world, and Egypt was one of the very first. Of course, this is very good news. It's also bad news to the extent it's the oldest. So as being the oldest, we will need to, you know, do something to, to modernize it, but we can discuss it. We already have a very good cooperation and this is needed more than ever. This is why we will invest at least 200 million euros from today's package to make our cooperation even more effective 
The discussion addressed the importance of continuing to confront common challenges, most notably illegal immigration, as we affirmed our commitment to combating this phenomenon. Europe is the biggest market. Egypt is the biggest country in the region, you know. And still, if you look at the numbers on the trade relationship, is not where it could have been. But what is the good news? The good news is I've been here one year and a half, and what happened is, you know, a dream for any, let's say, trade official, you know. The, the, the relationship has really boomed and has transformed and has been upgraded. Uh, I've been here and already the president of the European Commission has been here uh, in the last uh, two years at least three or four times and she's coming back again for the fifth time I think in the, for the investment conference and the last time she was here in March she signed a very important document with President Sisi which is the upgrade of the relationship to strategic. Now we have the strategic and comprehensive partnership. And, and let me say one word about the word strategic, because I think that encompasses the key aspect. We don't have many strategic partners in the EU. It's like a closed club, let's say it's like a privileged club, you know, of partners with whom we have a very special relationship, which is political and economic, and it covers many areas. And basically it means that we agree and we commit to talk to each other, whether it's every year or every second year, at the highest level, so at the level of the presidents and discuss all the agenda, political, economic, and talk about other issues, you know, in the rest of the world. So we have strategic partners like the US, Japan, Korea, nobody else in, uh, in North Africa. So I was happy to see that materializing. So uh, our job has been now in a way transformed, how to help now this partnership really um, flourish. I'm happy to say that, you know, in March, the government took some very important steps, some very bold reforms, with the help of the European Union, with the help of the International Monetary Fund. And now the landscape has changed, or actually, I should say, is changing, because there's a lot of work still to be done. Now I think we have seen some concrete steps, which are actually creating, what I said before, this trust, this confidence into the economy. So now, one of the reasons why we want to organize this investment conference at the end of June is to send a message that the situation has changed, that now European investors can come back, are welcomed back, and they will see, you know, uh, an economy which is different than the one they had seen, you know, two years ago. So we're working, it's still work in progress, but I think the prospect of, let's say, Increasing investment in Egypt is, is quite big. What I would advise a European investor, why to come to Egypt in a nutshell? First of all, as I said, you know, high-skilled labor, you know, uh, especially for, uh, you know, uh, companies that are interested in uh, high-tech, you know, research and development. Secondly, you can have very plentiful resources in terms of renewables. That's a very big must for every European investor if they don't work with renewables, they don't work with green energy, you know, it is a no-go area. So Egypt provides that. Thirdly, close to Europe, you know, uh, short supply routes. And fourthly, we have a strategic partnership. You know, we have a relationship, we have uh, a place, a uh, framework within which we can resolve problems. But the situation is perfect, not at all. But we can work together. And that's why, you know, it's a good time for European investors to look into Egypt, you know, from the strategic, the economic and the um, supply route level.